Hello, fellow forensicators. Today, I'm going to be looking at firmware update version 23.4 for the Tableau TX1 Forensic Imager. This version of the firmware enables the TX1 to detect Android and iOS devices and perform a backup for those devices. This is an interesting feature addition and looks like the company may be heading into the competitive space of cell phone extractions. This is potentially useful for digital forensic examiners as your current workflow funnels all of the cell phone extractions to your laptop. And if you're on scene and have more than one phone, your bottleneck will be your laptop. So keep in mind that this process allows you to perform a backup of the device. For iOS devices, you are essentially doing a iTunes backup. For an Android device, you're essentially doing an ADB backup. The data that you will acquire include your call logs, contacts, media, SMS messages, and app data. But what you're missing because you're not doing a full physical acquisition, you may be missing things like files and deleted data. And then applications get to choose what to be backed up and so you may or may not be getting any application specific data. And the main requirement for this is that you need to have the pins to unlock the phones that you want to extract. In order to take advantage of this feature, we first need to get firmware version 23.4 or newer. We can go to the open text website and then find the Tableau firmware update. You can see the description below for the link. And after downloading the Tableau Firmware Updater, go ahead and launch the program. And then take the SD card out of the back of your TX1 and then connect it to your computer. If you don't see the TX1 SD card listed, click on the refresh in the menu item so that you get the program to recognize it. Once you see it on the list, click on the checkbox to select that device. And then make sure you have 23.4 as the available firmware version. If everything looks good, go ahead and click the update. And then the program will write out the image to the SD card and then verify the SHA-256 hash. When it's done and verified, go ahead and click quit to exit the program. Remove the SD card from your computer and put it back into the slot on the back of the TX1. All right, so now when you turn on the TX1, you will see a new icon on the bottom of the home page that allows you to do an extraction from the mobile device. Go ahead and click on the icon and we see that we have four sections to fill in. The first section is where you can add in the examiner's name, the case ID, and notes. So I'm going to go ahead and type those in. And then the second bubble shows the source where we can add a phone. I'm going to skip that for now and then go to the third bubble, which shows the destination. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in my external hard drive on the right hand side of the TX1. And as you can see, the TX1 recognizes my Samsung T7 and I've already got it formatted with the XFAT format. And then I have over 600 gigs of free space. I can choose the naming scheme of the output folder with any combination of date and time, the model, the serial number, and or the case ID. And I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it as the date and time format. All right, so now let's go back to the second section here where I can add a phone. At first, the name of the iPhone is recognized, but the model and serial number are not available. And we can see here in the banner in red, it says device has not granted trusted access. So if we take a look at our phone, we can see that there is a trust don't trust pop-up waiting for our action. So once I hit the trust button, you can see the banner on the TX1 change to backup encrypted is enabled, which is what I had set up this phone to be. And I can go ahead and hit the details menu item from the, the three dots and I can see the make of the phone, the operating system, a version of the operating system, the product code, the IMEI, etc. I also have the option to manage backup and encryption 
and then I can also eject the phone. And if I select the Manage Backup Encryption, I can set the encryption password, which I'm going to go ahead and skip for now. And then I'm going to click back to select the phone to make sure it is selected. And then the last section here, section four, it shows the settings where you can select to extract in a native format, the LX01 format. The advantage of the NCASE LX01 logical evidence file is that it is a container so you can better maintain data integrity of the collected evidence. But I'm gonna go ahead and leave it on native so that afterwards I can see the output files for this demo. And I'm gonna leave the metadata selected, otherwise I will not be able to hash the extraction. And for the hash type, I'm gonna leave it uh, using MD5. But we also have the SHA option. And the rest of the settings are only available for the LX01 containers, like the file size for each segment, whether to use compression, and whether to verify the image after reading it back. So I'm gonna leave all those alone. And once I have filled out everything, I can click the bottom bar that says Start Mobile Backup Acquisition. And at this point, the phone will once again ask to be trusted, as you can see here. And then I have to type in the PIN to allow that to happen. And once that has been entered, off it goes for logical extraction. In my case, I have about five gigs of data on this phone, so it took about five minutes to extract. Your mileage may vary. And when it's done, we get a chance to look at the log. So let's take a look here. The top section here is the timestamp of the extraction, general case information, the firmware version of the TX1, etc. The second section is the info about the source phone, including the name, the IMEI, the OS type and version, product, model, serial number, and then whether the backup is encrypted. Next, we have the section regarding the type of backup, and finally, the destination information. All right, now let's take a look at the TX1 backup feature for Android phones. So clicking on the mobile icon on the bottom, we can see that we have four sections to fill in again. I'm gonna go ahead and type in the examiner's name, the case ID, and then the notes. I'm gonna say this is a Samsung S20, for example. And then I'm gonna click into the second section where I can add a phone. In my case, the only thing that the TX1 sees is a 19 meg device. So it's not seeing the phone fully. And so back on the phone, I'm looking at it. I've already turned on developer mode. I've already turned on uh, use USB debugging. So something else needs to be selected. So then I go to the settings and then find my USB settings. And then I change the setting from charging to MIDI. And then voila, the TX1 now recognizes the Android phone with the correct model and serial number. All right, so next I'm gonna go ahead and press on the three dot menu and select the details. Here I can see the make model of the phone, the operating system and version the product codes, the IMEI, etc. And I can also see the options for the Manage Backup Encryption, which is grayed out. And then lastly, I can eject the phone. So we'll go ahead and clicking back, and I actually went too far back to the mobile menu without selecting the source phone. So I'm gonna click back into the section two and then click on the phone to select it. Now I'm gonna click into the third section where it shows the destination. I already have my Samsung T7 plugged in uh, with the XFAT format and have plenty of free space. So I'm gonna leave that uh, default naming scheme of the output folder with a date and time. Now looking at section four, I am gonna leave the output as the native format along with the other defaults. And then click on the bottom bar that says start mobile backup acquisition. At this point, the phone prompts you to enter the encryption password. I'm gonna go ahead and leave it blank and then click on the backup data button on the bottom. And once that's entered, off it goes to do the logical extraction. 
And as you can see here, the speed is about 250 megabytes a second, so it's not blazing fast. Um, not sure why that is, but I have to investigate it at some other point. But anyhow, you can kind of gauge the speed of the acquisition by that speed. All right, and when it's done, we get a chance to take a look at the log. So let's take a look. The top section here is the timestamps of the extraction, the general case information, the version of TX1. The second section is the info about the source phone, including the name, the IMEI, the OS type and version, the product, model, serial number, and whether the backup is encrypted. Then we have the section regarding the type of backup and finally the destination information. So that's the log. So overall, I think this new feature is quite nice. Some people might snicker at this feature and say, hey, I already have my Celebrite or XOIY set up. Why do I need the TX1 to do this? Well, so the big question is whether you want to occupy your Celebrite or XOIY machine to do a logical extraction, especially if you have other phones to process. Then other folks may say, well, hey, you know, I can do an ADV pool or iOS backup. Uh, from the command line myself. Why do I need the TX1 to do this? And once again, yes, but in this day and age, not everyone knows or is comfortable to do command line. So it is nice that you can just push a bunch of buttons on the TX1 and it does the backup for you. In any case, whether you appreciate this new feature or not, it's pretty clear that the TX1 is going to be giving us a lot more phone extraction options in the future. So stay tuned. For other videos about forensics, watch these videos here. Make sure you click on the blue monkey to subscribe. Thanks for your time and happy hunting.